The future is definitely here. So, Tony, there's uh, several different models, correct? Yeah, right. I mean, this is the this is the go-to pro. Yes, correct. And uh, this is more of a consumer model. Yeah, yeah, right. We have a, a Go One and a Go Two. So, Go One and Go Two have a different market. So, Go Two Air and Go Two Pro is mainly for the consumer, for retail market. And the EDU version is for research and also for industry, like to do the proof of concept. But we also have a middle size and a big size uh, robot dog. That is money to do for industry, like oil and gas power station to do the inspection or fire control. It's also for the construction and security industry. So what kind of price points are we talking about? I know that like the go-to air is your entry level, correct? Yeah, That's right. really kind of an entertainment drone. A drone, I keep saying drone. <laughs> <laughs> a robot dog, which is also called a quadruped. But uh, so the entry level pricing at the retail level, how much? Yeah, so the entry level is from uh, 3,000 to, uh, to 5,000 with different level. But we also have a uh, EDU version that is support programmable. So that is uh, uh, more than 10,000. Mm. And that's programmable, it uses AI, correctly? Yeah, we did integrate with ChatGPT and we also built the AI functions inside of the robot with EDU version of Alien Go or B1. So you can put any sensor you want and to do the integration integrated with the robot system. So the robot system is totally open and it supports high level and low level control. That means you can fully build your own controller or even integrate any sensor you want with the robot system and build, build the navigation and the mapping and it's applied for different application scenario. Yeah, we're thinking of a lot of different applications uh, in public safety, uh, yeah, you know, putting maybe a thermal payload on it, a microphone speaker so that uh, you can, you know, communicate with suspects, maybe a barricaded suspect situation. But in construction, uh, actually the unit that we're getting with the EDU is going to have a uh, uh, a LIDAR unit that we're thinking construction companies who are, you know, doing vertical construction can go in daily and run the kind of the same waypoint mission and get uh, daily uh, LIDAR scans to make sure of the, uh, the precision of all the, the components in the building and the structure. So about competition, I know everybody hears about Boston Dynamics. Uh, they did a, a, a lot of research and just recently came out with a, a, a unit that they actually sell for commercial purposes. But it's my understanding that the price of the Boston Dynamics is pretty expensive. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, would you say they're your largest competitor or who do you think, who would you say, or do you have a competitor at this size and this price point? Yeah, at the moment, we do not have a competitor, especially for the small robots. But uh, talking about Boston Dynamics and uh, even uh, animal so they're not the real competitor for Unitree. So Unitree is actually have a full product line. When you look at the Boston Dynamics, they only have one model Boston Dynamics spot. But, but we do the uh, from entry level to middle level to high level. So the full product line covers for different industry, different market, yeah, meet the different requirement for the customer. That would be great for like the educational market. A university could get in with the EDU model for what, probably uh, $15,000? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. Versus having to invest probably $100,000 in the Boston Dynamics unit for kind of the same, you know, the same purpose really. Yes. For, right. As far as research goes. I think in the future, Unitary will release the more robots, not limited on quantum robot, robots, even humanoid robots. So we use our activator technology to build more robots, and uh, we believe the future is there. So I did. I have seen the humanoid. I have to admit it's a, it's a little freaky because uh, it's it's very big and very powerful. There's this guy that's kicking the robot on the hips, trying to knock it off balance. Man, I. Every time I see that, I think, well, that robot's gonna turn around, he's gonna punch this guy out. <laughs> Quit kicking me, would you? Uh, so, but it's, uh, that, now that's gonna be released uh, next year, uh, okay, but maybe still in. Yeah, we're already released. We will go into the massive production by end of this year, in December. Oh, that's quicker than I thought. Yeah, but it's, 
it's going to be initially primarily geared to the uh, research, research, uh, right? R and D. Yeah. Uh, but the finally, we will go into the automation for factory for different industry. In the next ten years, I believe that the humanoid will be replaced a lot of job for a lot humanoid. of the manual working. Yes, correct. Where safety is a concern. Yeah, I mean, right. people get injured and yeah. um, bad backs like me. <laughs> 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 Too much lifting. Yeah. Uh, so you can have these uh, humanoid bots do all the sort of heavy lifting and. Yeah. Uh, repetitive motion kinds of things. Yeah, you know, Tony. One of the things that that really my vision and and I think it is shared by a couple of other companies, including Drone Deploy, uh, was very big in the drone software business. Is the integration of drones and the quadrupeds. Uh, you know, you need the aerial uh, to get you know all of the uh, the vertical structures and and. Uh, but you need on the ground where all the gauges are, and a lot of the connections are, and the, the foundation of the uh, of these assemblies. So uh, I mean that's just one. I can think of even in public safety. I mean, uh, suspects they, they go into houses, they can go behind trees, and you know. Uh, so you need something in the air, but you also need something on the ground. And we see a day where, you know. These are programmed in similar languages, you know, Python and C++, and they use, you know, similar sensors and radios. So, I mean, there's no reason, they're both robots, and there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to make them to work autonomously together and communicate with each other. So the future, actually, the one application scenario is for the rescue. So when the drone get a very wide angle view on the, on the sky, so, he can detect the, the target and send the information to the robot. So the robot can go to a specific location and do the collaboration with the drone. Too but another one is that the robot can also to be a mobile docking station for the drone, yeah, to provide the maybe charging. Yeah. Mm, I never thought about that. But yeah. yeah, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna come up with a lot of ideas, and we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, kind of development work ourselves. So uh, we're really excited about the future. Yes, thank you. So thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, keep an eye on us because we're gonna be uh, very active in the quadruped market. <laughs>